this topic courtesy of page six it is a quick one regarding pregnant rihanna and asap rocky and jonah day in barbados after breakup rumors so if you were under a rock you would have known or unless you were living on the rock you would have known that for whatever reason out of the blue on social media are uh, two accounts one being some middle eastern guy i think who lives in dubai basically came out first and said oh um rumors on the street are that rihanna and asap rocky have broken up and then he deleted the original tweet people started going wild on the internet and then that was it and then out of the blue another account um this guy called luis pisano who i think goes by the name luis via the roma i think how you say his name on twitter how do you say it uh luis via roma who's called uh, luis pisano pisano on instagram who's basically a cultural commentator fashion commentator somebody who kind of you see a lot of shows stunting and doing his thing um he decided to come out with a bit more clarity in terms of what actually went on and basically said yeah they've broken up asap rocky has been dating or cheating on rihanna with a fenty shoe designer um this other lady called amina something it's been going on for a while they broke up in paris and basically added some detail to the whole story and the whole social media flipping erupted because you know rihanna's kind of been the the somewhat the healing saving grace in terms of social media attention with her you know pregnancy announcement and just kind of her you know crazy looks that she's been doing in terms of kind of redefining what pregnancy outfits look like on the gram or on social media in general and obviously you know them being a bit of a cute couple in the first place i think people were basically taken aback that rocky would <coughs> um, cheat on rihanna given the situation that they're in or given the circumstances of her being pregnant and them just welcoming their first child craziness but then for me personally it didn't feel like it felt weird to see that rumor because it felt unnecessary even if it was true especially coming from you would say somebody you would deem to be like a black voice a black creative because it feels like for the most part you do hear a lot of people in media who operate blogs or who operate instagram accounts or who have their own platforms where they basically stream cultural news regarding hip-hop and black entertainment and whatnot and fashion a lot of those people get really annoyed when they see these you know some of the bigger names within black culture go and do interviews with the hollywood reporter variety vogue id magazine dazed and confused hype it's whatever these platforms are and they say like oh why don't they ever come and talk to us and this is partly you would imagine the reason why because the black platforms are messy as hell like they kind of thrive in operating in the muck like putting their nose in the trough and just being messy as hell and spreading the most unsolicited rumors um and slander and not really having any pride in their work in you know or maybe in the ability to maybe you know keep um what's everything called in harvesting relationships and keeping people sweet it is ridiculous like you think of even jason lee earlier on in the flipping pandemic didn't he spread the rumor that allegedly the queen had died and she wasn't dead why did he think anyone would believe the first place you would hear the breaking story that the queen would dead would be the hollywood that locked it didn't make any sense and i feel like this whole story is basically a reminder as to why some of the biggest names in black culture don't go and speak to blogs first about whatever they're going through or just sit down in terms of having a sit down interview because they know because these black blogs are you know from the culture they pay way more attention to the messy stuff than the mainstream public does so when you sit down with the shade room or with the it's on site you know you're going to get messy questions because they detail every single part of your life sometimes to annoying detail which is why they go and speak to variety deadline hollywood reporter interview magazine id and all these kind of places because they're going to get softball questions out and you're going to make them look good not things that are going to harm their brand and obviously um you know via this picture we can know now that the rumors that they would breaking up is not true even if it was true maybe it is partially true because i think there was a picture someone shared of them at dinner where it looks like rihanna's crying but you can't really see if she's crying because it's a picture taken from really really far away on a super zoom but maybe they had a some sort of falling out some sort of argument you know in the run-up of them giving birth to their first child i'm sure it happens quite often and not where you basically break up seven times you know on the way to giving birth but so what like unless they come out and say it officially why does that even need to be spread why is that news that needs to be put out there especially considering that she's a woman who's giving birth to her first child you'd imagine especially if she's so beloved that people say this they if people loved her the way they, they actually 
say they do love her you'd imagine their actions would actually match up to it where they wouldn't be quick to go out there and put false rumors out in order to kind of make her stressed and whatever it may be you wouldn't want to do that you'd want to basically you know hold your girl down if Riri was your girl from afar as people call her online Riri and you wouldn't want to put out some salacious story but you know people do what they do I guess anyway the courtesy of the story in, on the New York Post sorry page six sorry it says they still have love on a brain when the of Rocky appear to be going strong during their Barbados sorry Barbadian vacation despite a recent cheating scandal that turned out to be hogwash the we found love singer 34 and fucking problems rapper 33 I didn't know they were that close in age I thought they were further okay were spotted walking side by side after going out for dinner together Rihanna was dressed in her signature maternity style in a sexy strappy black dress meanwhile Rocky appeared cool and casual in a pair of jeans a t-shirt and a trucker hat and sneakers the couple flew to savage and fenty designers native home over the weekend and rumors that rocky had been unfaithful writer louis bizano whom interview magazine called instagram's messiest fashion influencer imagine wanting to have that be your brand being messy could never be me to the speculation on twitter writing rihanna and asap rocky have split rihanna broke up with him after she caught him cheating with a shoe designer Amina Maud Maudidi. But let's let's counteract that. Let's go back a bit. Maybe the brand of being messy isn't too bad if you think about it. Because I'd imagine a lot of the stuff this guy says is probably stuff people talk about behind closed doors. A lot of people talk about behind closed doors. Maybe through WhatsApp groups, maybe through emails, a lot of the gossip that goes around. We basically I would imagine the the public gets the real gossip that's going on behind the scenes way later or way after the fact this actually actually happened people in the scene way know way more but they don't want it to get out of the public because they don't want it to affect their brand they don't want it to affect their bags it makes complete sense but you would imagine doing that and putting that stuff out in the public would probably make you enemy number one to the people that you operate in the industry because they wouldn't be comfortable being around you because they feel like you're a bit of a chatty pay like if you hear some stuff you know around a dinner table at some swanky event you might go and tweet about it and they don't want that because people can easily put two and two together and figure out who it came from if they do enough investigating work on social media you know how people are in it jobless people bored people just people that have a passion for finding out who said what they were able to put it together and they don't want to jeopardize their position either so but i just i just don't i just don't think as a black creative you should be doing that. i just think there should be far better avenues that you should be using your platform there should be far better ways to use your platform than to be out there trying to bring down people within your own community you would say right um people who kind of had this had the same struggle as you had in terms of coming up and making something of themselves just doesn't make any sense personally for me but you know everyone's different in the way that they go about their things but again rihanna's maternity style is undefeated in it imagine wearing she i don't think she's worn flats do you think that she's worn i think that's remember seeing flats was those union jordan fours the guava ones that may be the only flattest shoe she's worn her entire pregnancy it's always been high heels and short skirts like crazy man absolute legendary but anyway continue um after the rumor picked up steam maudidi um, was forced to address the the allegations the fashion designer faith for real on instagram and said i always believe that an unfounded lie spread on social media doesn't deserve any response or clarification especially one that is so vile however in the last four 24 hours i've been reminded that we live in a society that is so quick to speak on topics regardless of the factual basis and that nothing is off limits she added relative to rihanna's pregnancy not even during what would be the most beautiful and celebrated times of one's life she didn't outright deny it in the statement but again if the statement if the rumor is based on no factual truth you don't even need to address it just kind of move on and keep it going but i guess considering the two people involved it's considering you know specifically flipping rihanna you probably do have to say something especially when it's a rumor so salacious maybe some clarification is needed um pisano later retracted his remarks the fashion blogger tweeted i like to oh yeah let's see his um he's a flipping um statement it's pretty interesting he says as follows this is the blogger who the influencer sorry who put out the uh, rumor that they broke up he read a clarification on the apology that says as follows hi all so i'd like to address the situation last night i made a dumb decision to tweet some information i've received i'm not going to talk about sources blame others for a discussion that was started etc because at the end of the day i made the decision to draft that tweet press send and put out out with my name on it so i'd like to formally apologize to all parties involved 
um, with my actions and for my reckless tweets. I fully accept the consequences of my actions for my tweets and any harm they cause. I have no excuses for it. I've been my I've been way too wrapped up in Twitter drama and unfortunately leaned into being messy as a brand, which is something going forward I'm going to move away from interesting i'm going to take some time away from twitter to figure out what the looks like and how i can start using my platform better as i've gotten away from using them for more positive work again i apologize to them for this unnecessary drama the only thing i have to say off the back of that is that sometimes if all you have to uh, if all you have to give to the world is mess and drama should you really go back to the drawing board and try to figure out a new way to present yourself to the public when really you don't really have anything else of use to bring to society apart from being messy and a bit, a bit of a chai pay. Maybe this is a, an example of somebody who can't stand the heat because part of the reason why people like Wendy Williams is a good example. Maybe Charlemagne back in the day was a better example. Um, why they were so successful is that they were able to dance in the fire. They were able to, you know, um, resist the urges or the cause to quit or to go away or you're annoying like and just keep powering forward because their brand was based on mess i think jason lee's another good example of it also right there are many attempts at him there are many attempts that kind of come, come across him in terms of getting him out of here and he seems to always kind of ride them i think if you want that to be a brand you have to understand you're gonna get some things wrong you're gonna call things you know may, maybe you've got it right and people don't want to admit it in public who cares but you got it wrong in terms of everyone else's general public opinion and you're also going to have to be aware that you might be the um you might end up being um enemy number one in terms of societally how you're kind of treated in culture and whatnot which is also okay you shouldn't be kind of have a problem with that if when it comes to maybe someone stepping to you or maybe affecting your bag or deals or able to go to certain shows that's all gonna be okay i think those consequences are something that you should be able to bear but i feel like maybe nowadays people want everything they want to be able to say the messiest things without consequences and also be invited to all the shows you can't have everything you have to choose your lane and maybe that's the reason why most people in fashion just shut the fuck up and don't say anything because the the kind of rewards of that scene are so coveted that the sort of moral principled um satisfaction you get for maybe outing an abuser revealing a rumor um, highlighting injustices and bad practices and abuse whatever it may be it probably just isn't worth it which is a really sad state of affairs to say this but that might be the reason why you don't see more people because the thing is this same guy who did this horrible tweet spreading of what looks like to be a false rumor was also the first person and the only person who came out and said hey daniel lee said something incredibly racist in the meeting one day at Bottega Veneta which eventually led to him being fired and even then the same community that he was kind of trying to stick up for in the black community no one really backed him up if anything many people were making excuses oh we haven't got proof that daniel lee said the n-word we don't know what's going on people were so hell-bent on making excuses for daniel lee because they loved those fucking puddle boots because Patek Vanessa, Patek, sorry, Patek Vanessa, sorry, was one of the only fashion houses who really went out of their way to lean into black culture and invite as many of people people that look like myself in the scene maybe other brown people to kind of sit at their shows participate in clipping advertising and promo and whatnot all of that get gifted stuff in store get discounts i get it but that's the yin and yanga things isn't it on one end he's able to you know blow the casket on that and reveal some interesting topics interesting facts we probably didn't know i think he might have also added some um meat to the story concerning what happened with alexander wang i'm pretty sure but on the flip side he might get some calls wrong as well on that side of things so it's all a bit mad and it? it all is a really a bit mad but at the end of it the rumors are not true i guess for the most part they are still together and i don't know maybe maybe it's not, is there a side of things that i think maybe to interpret this maybe there's a group of people out there also who maybe want to see Vienna miserable is that a thing too does that exist you think you think there's a group for as many people out there who love and adore that woman who want her to have as much success as possible and they want to be near her and they give her all the love they don't care if the album doesn't come out in time and they want to buy all the makeup and whatever it may be 
there might also be a certain subset of people who legitimately want to see her have a human moment a somewhat regular moment where she seems to in encounter misery pain uh negativity i mean touch wood obviously don't want it to happen to her but i, I wonder if that's the case i wonder if that's what's driving these rumors people actually want to see her miserable so they'd be like you know what let's put out some rumors that everyone else has to go through right because everyone else in the scene who has baby daddies and you know whatnot or these unconventional relationships where it's not maybe you know done in the wedlock or whatnot, whatever it may be they go through drama like she shouldn't be allowed to gallivant around the world you know having this blissful relationship where she's wearing my baby daddy t-shirt she's like, no 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 let's put some bait out there and hope that people bite i don't really know because off the back of this i did remember seeing some screenshots from a random account of some brazilian model who said that um bari contacted her uh Bari basically is using you no know, Rocky was using Bari to contact her to hook up. Who knows if all that stuff is true, but God damn it, man! Like there's no rest in it. Sorry, there's no rest. There's no rest if you're a celebrity. You get all the adulation, all the praise when you're going through a, such a thing like a pregnancy like this, right? Everyone wants to be around you. They want to get you, you know, get you in their magazine, have, sit down for an interview, take candid pictures of you buying really cute baby wares at fucking Target or whatever it may be. But then they also, on the flip side, want to see a human moment. They want to, you know, they want to see you stumble. They want to see you crumble. They want to see you cry. It's like, God damn, you can't win with some people. You really.